you do not want to miss today's episode. I am going to shop two different days at the Goodwill bins where I got tons of really good stuff. It was like really lucky days. And I'm also going to shop several different Goodwill stores as well. So you're going to see this super mega haul and I'm going to show you everything that I got at the end. So stay tuned to the end and see everything I got and the prices that I spent on everything. For day one at the bins, I couldn't film because it was just way too crowded inside there. I didn't get a boatload of stuff. I actually got more yesterday in 15 minutes than I got today in 30 minutes, but it's still good stuff and I only spent $6. I don't know how I lucked out and only spent $6 for all the stuff you're going to see my husband and I put in the back of my trunk right now, but I really did only spend $6 even. Amazing. I can't wait to show you all the cool stuff that I got from these hauls at the end of the video. I think you're going to really like the majority of everything I got. And also let me know if there's anything that you see in my next shopping part that you would pick up that I didn't pick up. But here comes day two at the Goodwill bins and this is the day I got a lot more. All right, it is Friday now. I went yesterday and that's what you just saw. And now I'm gonna go again today and get even more stuff. Since yesterday, I didn't get a whole lot, although I did only spend $6 yesterday on everything that I got. So I'm gonna wait to show you my haul until I show you everything that I got for Thursday as well as for today on Friday. And I'm really hoping that I can find a lot of good stuff today. Um, I just feel like maybe today's gonna be good. I don't know, who knows? Maybe now that I said that, it's, I'm totally jinxing it. It's gonna be all garbage in there today. Who knows, but let's go. This location for the Goodwill bins usually doesn't open on time. They're supposed to open at 8, but they usually open up around 8.05, which is fine because traffic usually ends up making me be about that late anyways. So I stood there and waited for a few toe taps, and then we went inside. A lot of people will actually run inside, which I think is just crazy. You're really not making any difference in the amount of cool stuff that you find if you run because... Most of the time, people are all looking for something different than what you're looking for. Although, the people who are competing to pick out clothes, maybe that's why they need to do it. I don't know, because I don't really buy a lot of clothes from here. And I don't really know. I know there's a lot of people who resell clothing online and things on eBay. I know there's tons of people always in here looking for toys. In fact, I was talking with a gentleman in here about how uh, Scooby-Doo toys are really collectible and can make good money I guess I don't know that's not my thing and um, if you're somebody who resells something from the Goodwill bins let me know what it is you resell what you're looking for and um, if what you're doing makes you pretty good money online like if you sell it online or if you sell it in a booth just let me know what do you guys do when you're shopping at the Goodwill bins with the things that you got so you can see a lot of the things that I saw were broken but I am finding a lot of really good stuff I'm actually really surprised at how much good stuff I'm finding and how fast I'm finding it. You guys, I usually only spend about 30 minutes in the Goodwill bins. The reason for this is that there's not a lot of, of these big bins that have home decor in it. All these bins are like themed and organized based on like home goods or all toys or all books, all clothes. And the home decor uh, bins are few and far between. But I'm like the only person shopping for this stuff here usually. There's usually maybe one other person, maybe, and they don't. They probably don't have the same taste I do. <laughs> Who knows? But the other bins that they bring out later, maybe one of them might be home decor and the rest of them are going to be closed again. So I don't see a point in waiting there all day unless you're really waiting to find something like if... If you want to wait all day and see if you can find that one thing you really need or something like that. But usually being in there for 30 minutes is all you need to find some really cool stuff. And if you don't find cool stuff in 30 minutes, maybe you're not going to find cool stuff if you stay there and wait. So I personally did not suggest waiting for them to bring out more and more and more bins because the other bins they're going to bring out are most likely going to be clothes or electronics or toys they're not going to be a lot of home decor ones. And you can see them kind of a preview of what they're going to roll out soon and decide if it's worth your time to wait or not. But for me, it's not. This is all what I did in 30 minutes. I was out of there by 8.30 a.m., which is really incredible <laughs> that I can save that much time. But the next Goodwills that I go to don't open until 9, so we usually stop and grab some breakfast and um, hang out with the kids for a little bit in the car and then I'll be ready to go to the next Goodwill at 9. 
But I'm going to let you enjoy some more of this shopping with some nice relaxing music now. Let me know if there's something you see that I didn't grab that you would have grabbed or if you would have grabbed the things that I did grab.
I can't believe how much <laughs> I got today. And I also picked up some stuffed animals for my kiddos to give them for Valentine's Day. But it is super stacked. I spent $79.66, which is the most I've ever spent. And now it is time to load up. So my husband's pulling the car up to the front. That way I don't have to walk all this stuff on the bumpy asphalt and potentially break all the glass that I got. Considering it's so rare to get glass from here that's not already broken. Now it's time to head to the first Goodwill store. All right, I finished at the Goodwill bins and now I'm heading out to all the Goodwill stores and this is the first Goodwill store stop. Goodwill little baby. I have a helper this time, two helpers. Come on son, let's go. Close the door. Here we go. You coming? <clears throat> I don't know. This this store usually doesn't have a whole lot. Let's go. The first store that I stopped at is this Goodwill that is geographically closer to the Goodwill bins, moving more towards the more expensive neighborhoods. So I go to Goodwills in the more expensive neighborhoods because in general they tend to have better things over there um, and I just find better stuff. This one used to be one that was really well priced when I first moved here to Houston about a year and a half ago, but for some reason recently this has become one of the most expensive Goodwills that I shop at and I tend to not get much from here anyway. So I think I might actually start taking this Goodwill off of my route for my Goodwill shopping and I think that maybe... If I'm not shopping at it for a while and I come back and the prices get a little better, then I might add it back on there again. But for now, I think I am actually going to take this off of my route for my Goodwill shopping days. And I do all the Goodwill shopping usually in one day because of the way my work schedule works here with YouTube. I have to put out two videos a week. And then my husband goes to school full time and his classes this semester are extremely time consuming. I didn't expect them to be this time consuming for this semester. I mean, I should have. I don't know why I didn't. He's taking chemistry, um, trigonometry, and uh, government. And what's the other one? Oh, programming fundamentals. He's actually going to college for hopefully his bachelor's of science in computer programming, computer science. So he's finally starting his actual degree classes now. But they're really hard this semester and he has to be doing class pretty much like 12 hours a day. He's either in class studying or doing homework and so my thrift shopping days are very limited right now for the time being but his education is really going to come first before me thrift shopping. I have a huge stash of stuff in the garage that I can pull from especially after this day. I don't think I'm going to need to thrift shop again for about two weeks. So my upcoming videos are going to be all about how I'm flipping all of the things that I have found recently in this video or in my past videos that I haven't showed you how I flipped them yet. I'm going to be doing a whole lot of thrift flipping. So I hope that you're excited for that. And if that's something that you like, then definitely hit that subscribe button because I'm going to have tons of that content for you. A question that I have for anyone who's watching right now what would you rather see? Would you rather see a video of how I'm flipping them to sell them in my booth first? Or would you rather see how to decorate with thrifted stuff in your house? And I think either one of those could come up next for my next Wednesday video. Instead of having a shopping video, I'm going to do something with these thrift finds on that video. And then this Sunday, I have a furniture flip for you, which is going to be a china hutch that I do in a French provincial look. I think I got this china hutch for like $20 or maybe even free. I'm not sure. But it was 
in pretty rough shape and I turned it into something completely different than what it was originally and I think you're really really gonna like that especially because a lot of you have been requesting French country decor recently and I want to get working on some of that French country stuff for you so would you rather see flips for my booth or flips for decorating your house Okay, I finished at that Goodwill. I got a few good things. I still feel like I kind of overspent on some things, but I need to make sure that I have some stock for my shop. Um, actually, things are going pretty slow selling right now in my shop, but it's good to have some, some back stock just ready to go. There was a plate in there that you might recognize from a past video that I did. It didn't have a price on it when I saw it the last time I shopped in here, so I asked them up at the counter if um or what the price would be and they they told me 5.99 ricky shh, shh. they told me 5.99 for a plate and i said okay you can keep it and then <laughs> here baby here's some gummies and then today i saw it in there priced at 3.99 and it was the color of the week so it was half off so ha huh. time for the second goodwill store this goodwill store is hit or miss sometimes it has a ton of really good stuff and it's generally pretty okay price. I'd say it's kind of in the middle. Sometimes there's things that are way too expensive like that and this, or sometimes there's things that are really affordably priced. And I did get quite a few things from here when I did this trip. And this is in a more expensive area. So Houston has a lot of pocket areas where there's very wealthy neighborhoods and this is really close by to one of those very wealthy neighborhoods so you tend to find some more high-end things there this is actually where i found that 316 dollar <laughs> concrete bowl full of moss and i ended up spending i think like 6.99 for it or something like that but stuff like that can be found at this goodwill and they also tend to have some pretty good furniture here um, it's not priced well enough for me to resell it, but it is priced well if you're somebody who actually needs some secondhand furniture. So look in those super wealthy neighborhoods if you have any near you. Houston has a lot of those random super wealthy neighborhoods just because the economy here is crazy. But let's go on to the next Goodwill store. This is Goodwill store number three. And this one is in an area that is very, um, I would say maybe upper middle class if I had to guess. And this is my favorite one to go to. They're usually the best priced of all the ones that I went to today, and they usually have a pretty good selection of stuff. Although, I have to say, recently, all the Goodwills I've been shopping at have really limited merchandise. There's not a whole lot that they have out for some reason. I don't know why, because I know they're getting tons of donations right now with the spring cleaning fever everybody's got. But there's a lot of really cute stuff here. Also, at this location... I really like the people who work here. They are fun. They laugh together. They're very nice. And I think that they do a good job of making everybody feel comfortable shopping at this location. And just that right there is worth it for me to shop here because of the people that are there. They're great. And I did find some cool stuff. For some reason, I was on like a coffee cup <laughs> binge today buying tons of coffee cups. I don't know what it was. I just buy what I think um, will sell instinctively in my gut and those are things that I thought were going to sell this little canister thing I thought was really cool but I really I just went crazy with the coffee cups today <laughs> I don't I, I just guess there was a lot of really cool ones in there I normally never buy it I also bought myself a pull-up bar because my husband and I are trying to get in shape then it is time for the haul you guys are going to love this okay so it is the next day and I apologize for the background noise we live in a neighborhood now instead of out in the country, so somebody is leaf blowing right now. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it or not, but we'll find out when I'm editing the video. But anyway, I want to show you all the amazing stuff that I got. I completely filled my entire trunk, and we also today picked up this beautiful hutch. My neighbor's daughter was getting a new hutch that my neighbor painted for her daughter. We took it from my neighbor's house into a different city to deliver it to them because they didn't have a truck. And then as a thank you for doing that, they gave us this hutch. And so we took this hutch home. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do to it. Give me some ideas in the comment section down below. I'm thinking that you can see on this side, the tops of the cabinets here are a little bit outdated and they do um, tend to look outdated, even painted. So I'm thinking of doing a painting uh, technique where we paint the inset part a different color and kind of distress it and make it look 
French country or French presidential. Provincial. <laughs> so I think that would look well or go really well with this. I guess I just can't talk today, but I think this would look good French provincial. And I did do a French provincial hutch already that I'm going to be showing you next time I have my video out on Sunday. So the first item I want to show you is this clock right here. If it looks backwards, it's just because my camera is flipped, but I don't know if it works. I thought it was really unique. It has a metal detail on here and distressed white wood. Very cute. Let's see. I don't see. Hmm. It kind of does look like a Hobby Lobby tag, but it doesn't say Hobby Lobby on it. So I don't know. Don't know where this one came from. Maybe Home Goods or something. But if I think it'll look really cool. I just need to put a battery in there and see if it works. My next item is this literally brand new, probably from Walmart, basket. The liner is a little bit dirty from probably just from being at the bins. And then I also found this cute little lavender, which I have an idea for what I'm going to use it for in a future video. Next items are these candle holders. I believe they came from Kohl's. Yep. Originally, the larger one was $24.99. And the smaller one was $19.99. And I got them for $2.99 a piece. They are brown with kind of like a hammered metal finish. And I think I'll probably leave them as is and maybe um, add a wooden tray to the top. What do you think? Next, I got this really cute plate. I love the cute traditional look that it has. It says Butler's Pantry Gourmet by Lennox. And it was $1.99, but blue was half off. So a dollar. This would go great on a candle holder. As you probably already noticed in my shopping video, I bought a boatload of coffee mugs. This one I bought, oh gosh, it's so bright. There we go. This one I bought actually with my neighbor in mind. Let me turn my light down. Oh, I just made it yellow. Man, I'm not good with technology. <laughs> so this I bought for my neighbor. I knew she would love it. They were $1.99 a piece and I got a set of three of them. I think she's gonna really like it. Same one again. Ooh, here's a different one. This one I thought would be really good for Valentine's Day decor or just spring, Easter. Kind of has a little bit of an Easter egg vibe. Speckly, pink, cute, pastel. And this one was 99 cents. I got two of these cuties. These were 99 cents a piece. This was like ripped off, so they got the price from the other one. There they are. Very cute and cottagey. Would go with anybody's decor. Look at my hair. <laughs> this next thing I wasn't really sure about, but I had bought something else that I thought would go great on this. It's the base to something. It was $2.99, which I think was kind of overpriced for a broken base on something. But I mean, they got me. I still bought it. <laughs> so I'm going to put a glass vase on here and glue it on there. I think it'll look really pretty and it'll be a fun DIY. Now I have this crock right here it was $1.99. It's kind of like a corning ware. Oh, it is corning ware. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? Can you see it? It's backwards, but it says corning ware. It needs to be cleaned, and then I will put it in my booth. Next, I got this easel from Hobby Lobby, it says. But this I got out of the bins, and I could use these in my booth or at home for all sorts of decor. I got this, which I think is a picture frame. It is from the design house. I don't know, I've never heard of that, but it's like a trifold thing. I just need to reattach the third door. But I thought that was unique, pretty cool. And I think it's something that doesn't really go out of style. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what this is called, but they're something nautical and really cute, and I've always wanted one. If you know what these are called, let me know in the comment section. But it's a birdhouse, it looks like. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I'm going to have to figure out a way to clean the inside, too. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know this. <laughs> this is from Anthropology. Wow, look at me. Anthropology. $24.95 on clearance. 
What? Maybe I have to keep it just to say I have one item from anthropology in my house. All right. You can never get enough of these silver coffee pots. This actually wasn't closing when I first got it, but my husband bent it for me and made it so I could close again. Recently, I saw, um, what is her name? Natalie from Vintage Porch on Instagram. She turned this into a lamp. Isn't that a cute idea? I don't know if I'll do that, but I think I am going to shine it up. Isn't it so pretty? Great condition. Look at how silver the inside is. So if I can shine it up to look like that, that's going to be cool. I don't know where this one is from, but it's massive and super cool. And I actually have another massive candle stand that is like four, three, three feet tall, maybe. That would go really well with this, but it's got a distressed finish to it. And I really want to keep it because it's so well made. Super great solid wood. It says this item has been made and finished by hand by the finest craftsmen. Each piece is unique and may have individual characteristics that will add charm to your home. Well, isn't that the truth? It's so pretty. I got this faux fern, dusty a little bit, but I got this for $6.99. Kind of a lot for something at Goodwill. I usually try and stick to like $3.99 and below, but it's great quality. And I might keep this one actually. <laughs> I'm supposed to be making money here and I just keep keeping all these things. But anyway, it's a great heavy quality plant. I don't know where it came from. No um, brand or anything on it, but look at how realistic it looks. Major score still, I think. Another piece that I'm gonna keep, a turkey platter. I have been looking for a turkey platter since like, August last year. <laughs> this one was $6.99 also. Since I'm not reselling it, I'm okay with that price because these, when you try and buy them anywhere, just anywhere, um, they're like 30 to 40, 50 bucks. So the brand is called Gibson and it is dishwasher safe and oven safe. Hello. But look at how perfect it is. Excellent condition. I love how it has that kind of handmade look to it. This is kind of unique, and I'm not sure if it'll sell, but it just seemed really cool to me. It was $1.99, and it says, Long Island, New York, container made in England. Wait, designed what? Designed by D-A-H-E-R. Dar? Daher? How do you pronounce that? Is it like a cookie tin or something? I don't know, but... Either way, I just thought it was really cool and it would look cool on a shelf. Hopefully somebody sees this and sees how cool it is. Like I did. Look at that. And these are like 3D. Another cute coffee mug. This one has little daisies on it. And then the inside is like an orangey, yeah, pretty orangey color, kind of coral. This will go in the booth and it was $1.99. This little cute pot. It is referred to as a stew pot or a soup pot. And I know that because the cashier at Goodwill asked me what in the world this was. And I said, I don't actually know. I just think it's cute. <laughs> and I thought that it was like a individual, um, like individual serving size for if you're making like small casseroles or something. I, I had no idea. But Google search said that this was called a stew pot. So if you were wondering, this is called a stew pot. <laughs> And this will be going in my booth. This kind of goes along the same style. Oh, I forgot to tell you how much that cost. Hold on. It was $1.99. This kind of goes along with that same style. It's got the brown handle, the beautiful speckled finish in here. And this was $1.99 for a pretty coffee mug. I know somebody's going to love this. And it's going to be somebody who loves indoor plants. I just already know. I can just, I sense it. Speaking of somebody who has indoor plants, I think that they would also like these mugs. <laughs> I got a set of eight and they were 99 cents a piece. Let's find out who the maker is. B-A-U-M, bomb. I don't know anything about that, but they have a cute speckled finish and every one of them is a little bit different than the other. And I have a set of eight. This is from 1948. And it is a McCall Needlework Knitting, Crochet, and Home Decorating Magazine. Originally was 35 cents, summer 1948. And look at how big the magazines were. 
This is really massive. Yeah, magazines are not that big anymore. But it's beautiful and it has really beautiful images inside. And I have a second one that was winter 1948 to 49. Same stuff on there. But come on, how cool. I thought this would be cool to frame certain images in there. Look at this. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I ripped it. Even a child can do it. How fun. Now you can make this quilt. Press flower pictures. Oh, this is my kind of magazine. If I was around back then, I'd have been reading this, hands down. But I don't know what kind of images I'll find in here. I just saw it and grabbed it because they're 50 cents a piece. And it's just super cool. Look at these beautiful women. So classy, making up their own clothes. We don't do that anymore. I always feel like, where did those skills go? I wish we still had those skills. The next big heavy box. Let's see what's in here. I think I know what it is. This is a cute little bunny crock that was $2.99. This is great for spring and um, in motorcycles. And it came from hmm, gift or gift craft. Eh, I don't know. Don't know where it came from, but I just thought it'd be cute for spring or Easter. Ooh, this was my baby's favorite thing I bought. She is really into colors right now. This one was $1.99 and it has an adorable weave pattern on there. But she just kept saying yellow, yellow the whole time and holding it. And I thought for sure she was going to break it, <laughs> but she didn't. And this is absolutely perfect to go with all my lemon stuff. It's from Bath and Body Works. Man, I'm finding a lot of Bath and Body Works stuff, but really adorable, super adorable. Oh, these are my favorite mugs that I found. Look at how adorable. It is a cornflower blue color, if you can't tell on camera. It's actually not as vibrant blue as it's showing up on camera in real life. So absolutely cute. It's from the at-home store. I might have to keep these, I don't know. We're gonna find out. <laughs> I have a story about these and I'm really sorry about how crazy my hair looks because every time I'm bending over and coming back up, <laughs> my hair is like, woo. Okay, but two of them were $2.99 and one of them was $1.99. So whoever priced the $1.99 cup, we're friends. Whoever priced the $2.99 cups, bring it down, bring it down. $3, really? But anyway, when I got to the register, they at first weren't going to price match them all three with the 199 and there was a fourth one in the store but it had a big chip in it so i didn't get it but um finally a manager came out and she was okay with it so they changed the price for me to all three of them being 199 each and i love that scalloped edge that it has kind of reminds me of like a tulip but in a powder blue oh it's gorgeous i imagine those would look really pretty on a mug rack which i also bought i'll show you later I have two Pottery Barn plates. I actually had a set of five of these, um, the bigger ones. So these are kind of like the medium plates. They're not like the the little bread, what do they call those bread and butter plates or something? I don't know, the smaller ones. This is like a medium one in between. And they were $1.99 a piece, Pottery Barn. I don't know if you can see. Pottery Barn, take my word for it. <laughs> Do you remember in my last haul, I got smaller versions of these plates? Well, the bigger versions were on sale, half off. So these were $2.99, so $1.50. And I thought these would look good on anything or by themselves. They're just absolutely beautiful. The color is to die for. I love it. These look really pretty hanging on the wall too. Now this, doesn't this remind you of a Waverly pattern? Let's see what it says. Not food safe. Okay. Um, Toyo designed by Raymond Waits. Never heard of it. $3.99. Half off. This was the plate I had wanted a while ago. And I went up to ask for the price because there was no sticker on it. And they were like, yeah, $5.99. And I was like, yeah, no, you can have it. <laughs> I don't want it. $5.99 for one plate? Nope. So they kept it and I checked out with all the rest of my stuff. 
And then when I went back and saw it there, it was $3.99. So kind of weird that they told me $5.99 and then marked it $3.99. Don't know what that's about. I had somebody comment saying that they worked at Goodwill and they said that for them, I guess just maybe it's just their store, but they we used to um, give a really big price to somebody who said, oh, there's no price on it because they blamed that person for removing the sticker in order to get a better deal. Well, I don't remove the stickers in the store. <laughs> so I remove them at home after I've paid for them. So I don't know if that's why they gave me the big price. Maybe all Goodwills think that people are just being scam artists, but I was not. And this time I got it for half off of four bucks. So $2, which is what I would have paid the first day. I would have paid $1.99 or $2.99 for this the first day. The first thing is I have this kitchen conversions little thing. It's probably from Hobby Lobby. Yep, Hobby Lobby. <laughs> but it was $1.99. It has a little bit of a scratch on the top, so I'll probably distress the whole thing so that it looks like it's supposed to be that way. And I might keep this or I might sell this. I don't know. This cute copper bin I thought was adorable with this diamond pattern on it. It is from Ashland, which I believe is a Michaels brand. I got it for $2.99. I have a whole copper section in my booth usually, and that stuff sells pretty quickly. So I need to fill in some more copper stuff, and I thought this would be pretty good. Okay, so this basket was from Goodwill for $2.99, or maybe I got it at the bins and I already had. I don't even remember which store I got this from. <laughs> but this was in really great shape. I love the little handles on there, and it's kind of dainty and unique looking. This basket was $2.99 also, and I think this would look pretty painted. So I'm going to be painting this in an Eastery color. Should I do pink? Should I do purple? Should I do a minty green? Should I do a light yellow? Let me know in the comment section. What color screams Easter to you? Now I have this box, which I should have asked for a separate price for, but I was too lazy to dig it out of my cart. Inside this box is all the glass stuff that I got from the bins that was not broken. I mean, I should have got a lottery ticket that day, but I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I'm just starting to collect them now, apparently. And um, I was amazed that they didn't break. And I even bumped it in my car and thought I was going to break it in my car and it didn't break. So these are really incredibly made. This is kind of what I was thinking would go good on that stand. <laughs> it's just small. Oh my goodness. Look at it. It looks so silly. <laughs> But something like this on here, I think would look really cute. And then I have a medium and an extra large one. I really don't know what I'm gonna do with these. When it comes to the bins, I normally would say, just stay away from stuffed animals, but these looked brand spanking new. Like never even been played with once, but I will wash them thoroughly in my washing machine. Look at the sparkly hands. My baby loves sparkles and anything pink. She's just born that way. <laughs> look at me. I look like I look like I'm one of them right now. But she also likes frogs. She thinks they're silly and I thought this would be something she'd really like to get for Valentine's Day. So, these are for my little ones for Valentine's Day and I don't, they were so lightweight. I probably paid maybe a dollar for all three of them. This is one of my favorite things that I got, so I'm going to have a really hard time not keeping it. It is let's see where it's from. Hmm, it doesn't say, but it was $16.99, and the scalloped edges just, oh, they're so cute. I really want to keep this one. It could be used for anything, like your coffee station. You can put your coffee maker in here with your extra coffee stuff in there also. There's so many things you can do with a cute scalloped tray. Some more greenery. This is a bunch of faux indoor plants. And I will use these probably outdoors in my garden since I don't want to water plants in the middle of a drought when it's five bajillion degrees outside and one million percent humidity. So <laughs> fake plants are my friend here in Houston. This little cutie I thought was perfect for spring and it's from Target. It says threshold five dollars. So it's in the dollar spot. But I actually got it for like a dollar. So technically the bins is like the dollar spot for me because it's like dollar, dollar, dollar of all these really lightweight things. This I got from the bins as well. Such a wonderful painting. And it's signed by Faye1979. 
really incredibly talented, whoever did this. I find lots of really talented painters here in Texas. And it's so sad to see it thrown away at a Goodwill, <laughs> in a Goodwill bins even. It actually has an old Goodwill price on it. And so that to me shows that somebody bought it at a Goodwill and then didn't use it and gave it away. And then Goodwill just had it, took it straight to a bins. But I got this, I'm guessing I probably, by the way, I probably spent about $2 for it. And it was priced $3.99 at a Goodwill a long time ago. So I'm definitely going to try and find a frame this size and frame it before I sell it. This I thought was really adorable. I'm going to, I'm going to guess it's from Hobby Lobby, although there's no tag. Yeah, it doesn't have a tag, but it says gather together. Although I think I'm going to sand that off and put something like garden on there because I just think that would work better for the season right now. And it just looks a little too hard to read. Here's a piece that's ready to go as is. It says French market number three, adorable in a million different ways and in perfect condition, just needs a wipe down. That'll go straight to the booth. This appears to be something that somebody bought from an antique mall because it has a price on it as though it were priced in a booth, $10. And it's gorgeous. It's a wild lupine, which is funny because wild lupine grows here, but it also grows where we're from in Arizona. And they would grow in our yard when we lived out in the country. And they're beautiful, like real short flowers. I'll say they're about this tall, but I thought this would look really pretty once I get to do my faux painting texture on there and put it into a nice frame. This goes really well with that same floral print. And it has a beautiful frame on it as well. The brand is Uttermost. And this is just ready to go. I'll just clean it with some Windex. Maybe make the frame a little more gold. Here is another one that was a matching um, piece, a matching pair to the one I just showed you. And it is a Nastery. I can't even say what that flower is. <laughs> oh, here is one of my other favorites from this haul. A copper heart. <gasps> Look at how cute it is! And it's heavy. But it's meant to hang on the wall and just be a copper heart on the wall. This is the most unique Valentine's Day decor that I could possibly think of. How awesome. And it'll go great with all my copper stuff in my booth. Here's another probably Hobby Lobby picture frame that I think is really unique. It would look good as a background to stuff in my booth. And uh, once it sells, that's cool too, but it'll make my booth look prettier while it's there. Okay, so here is a mirror. I can't really show it to you because it's just gonna reflect the camera back at you, but it has a shelf on it and there's no, oh, here we go. It was from Columbia Frame Inc. I don't know, but it's great and it's especially awesome for right now when it's about to be gardening time, springtime. And I got this at the bins. This painting is phenomenally beautiful. The detail in it up close is breathtaking. I love it. It's a print, but man, is it a good print. The frame is gorgeous. I think this will sell quickly, but now that I've said that, it's probably never going to sell because <laughs> I jinxed myself. But I hope it does because somebody can really enjoy a beautiful painting like that. Here's a little bird cage. Um, it's a little bit too shiny and new looking for me. So I think I'm going to just like, spritz it with some maybe some tan colored paint i'm not sure but i do want to make it appear a little older and maybe add some um, of my greenery inside there that would be great garden decor isn't this just the most homey sweet thing you've ever seen it says home is where the heart is beautiful cross stitch i got this galvanized pot and it has a really cute um what is that a bee Okay, it kind of looks like a wasp. But I'm going to say it's a bee because wasps are evil and bees are cute. But this is cool. I'm just going to clean it up and put it in my booth. I might put a fake arrangement in there too. I don't know. And then this also going to my booth. It's vintage and it's from Georgia. Here's a galvanized pot that has a liner in it for an actual plant. And I also got some greenery that was just floating around in the bins. And this might even look good in here if I arrange it right. 
I think it's cute. I love purple and yellow flowers together. And then this uh, boxwood, I guess you'd call it, is classic. You can use it with anything. This wooden cup or bowl it looks like a mortar and pestle, but it's missing the mortar. Would that be the mortar? Is this a pestle? It's missing the, the thing, yeah. But um, I'm going to have to <laughs> sand the name off the bottom here and oil it up, and then I'll sell it just as a decorative little wooden thing. These galvanized bins are brand spanking new from Walmart, and these are great for plants or for drinks when you're having a party. And I'm probably going to keep these because they're a little pricey to buy new. This I bought from the painted tree where my store is at. So there's a couple other home decor booths that are in the painted tree. And there's one in particular called like Hill Forest Co. I think. I think that's what it's called. And I love their stuff in there. And this was one of the things that was in there. It was for 12 bucks. These tulip wreaths are very expensive to make on your own because just picture like every little spot is like $3 or $4, $3.99. So like two, three, four, five, you end up spending like 30 bucks to make it yourself. And then it has a nice wreath form to it. Here's a nice wooden frame that I think would work for one of those prints that I've picked up lately. Maybe that floral print will fit nicely in here and I will paint it out in probably a distressed white finish. Or maybe I can make it gold or maybe green. I don't know. We'll see what the mood decides when I go to do it. <laughs> this frame is gorgeous. I love the blue on it and the distressed. That's wood with distressed blue paint over it. This is going to look great with any kind of print inside it. And I bought a book. It is a book of all the botanicals that you can dream of that are beautiful. And it has amazing illustrations in it. Well, the book was like 20 bucks or something like that, but I can fill like 300 frames with that book. So that's something to think about when you are um, a person who flips and has a booth. Getting frames and putting those beautiful botanical prints in them is a really cost-effective way to have some smalls in your booth that can change out for the seasons or be for all your round decor. This is something I picked up from the bins and it's in perfect condition. It's pretty clean, actually. I'll probably just disinfect it. But I think this would look really pretty on the dining table underneath that um, really expensive, <laughs> um, what would you call that thing? That big, heavy bowl that had the moss inside it. If you haven't seen that yet, I found at Goodwill a 300 and something, $316 big, heavy concrete bowl of moss. And this would look good underneath it. I know I just got a mug rack from the bins, but I couldn't help myself and I had to get this one. I feel like I'm living out my dreams of all the farmhouse things that I wanted when they were new that I couldn't afford. And now that they're cheap and being thrown away, I'm like, yay, I get to have all these amazing things that used to be really expensive and it makes me feel happy. So <laughs> it makes me happy. Let me do it. But anyway, this was 10 bucks and I think that's a fair price for this mug rack considering it was probably around 20 new. So that's fair. I think for sure when you're selling used, you should at least consider selling it for half of what it was new. I think that's just fair to do. You can never have too many wooden checkerboards. And this has a whatever this game is called on the back. And this will go in my booth as a background. I feel like my whole booth background is going to turn out to be a bunch of checkerboards at this point. But people like checker everything right now. So even if they don't buy it, it'll draw their eyes in at least. This purse I got from the bins. It is, I think, Universal Thread brand. They were trying to sell it at Goodwill for $19.99, and it did not sell. Yeah, here we go. Universal Thread. So this Target bag was probably a good 40 bucks new. And I like that it has the three dividers, and it is literally like new. Like there's hardly even a speck of dust inside this bag. And this is going to make a really great diaper bag for me. Something else I've heard is that people find money inside purses. So if you're going to the... Goodwill bins or Goodwill in general, check all those zipper pockets, look all up in there and see if somebody forgot their five, ten dollars in there and you can go get yourself a free Starbucks. <laughs> Last but not least, this is a crate and barrel wooden serving dish. Definitely needs to be cleaned up and you know maybe given some oil on there. But I found anthropology, I found crate and barrel, and I found pottery barn in one haul. 
I can hardly stand here now because there's so much stuff on the floor. But I think I spent around $150 for everything. The first day at the Goodwill bins, I only spent $6 and got quite a bit of stuff. I just got hooked up. They, um, I don't know how they charged me only $6, but she just gave me, she was like six bucks even. And I was like, cool, <laughs> you betcha. And then <laughs> the next day I went was $78. And then that day I did a bunch of different Goodwill stores. And each time it was like $20, $30. So I'm guessing I spent around $150 total for all of this stuff, which I'm hoping that I can double or triple through selling in my booth or at least double and then keep stuff that I want to keep. And it covers the cost of what I wanted to keep. <laughs> Somebody commented on my video the other day saying that people, people who are flippers, um, never, we, we never keep anything. We just borrow it until we're ready to sell it. And I think that is so me. <laughs> I decorate with new stuff all the time and then just sell my other stuff and it's like I can never just stop decorating so I always get something new and then sell the other thing and so I guess I was just meant to have a resale booth because how else would I be selling all this stuff and redecorating it and getting away with it <laughs> because I couldn't afford to do that otherwise if I wasn't selling it so if you're somebody like me who has to constantly redecorate maybe you can consider reselling in some kind of way maybe at going to um, antique markets or craft fairs or whatever it may be and reselling and buy used because if you buy new and then resell, you're going to lose half the value of what you spent. If you buy used and resell, you'll get your money right back. So something to consider. Here we go. Oh gosh. Ooh. Up and out. Up and over, up and over. Oh God, uh, there we go. <sighs> okay, it's like Christmas. I'm like unwrapping it. <laughs> oh, hello there. I didn't see you there. I'm just kidding. So my microphone's still on. Okay, I just want to keep everything also. Or no, that wasn't from the bins. I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, my brain. All right, this is not from the bins either. This is something else that I picked up from the booth or from the from the booth. <laughs> If you got this far in the video, I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart that I am so thankful that you are here to support our channel, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye.